Dr. Erica Steiger earned her PhD from Cornell University, where she is currently Director of Programs for the System of Rice Intensification, a sustainable system for growing rice now being implemented widely in Africa and other developing countries. She has traveled widely throughout Africa, including to the fabled city of Timbuktu. <laughs> she is experienced in working in multicultural environments and speaks a number of languages besides her native German. Her work includes 20 years experience in the fields of tropical agronomy, crop and soil science, agroforestry, natural resources management, land degradation, plant propagation, and integrated pest management. She has done over 10 years of field work with rural communities in humid, semi-arid, arid, and highland ecozones of Africa. She designs, implements, and manages research and development programs at local, provincial, and national levels. So she basically does everything. <laughs> she has been a consultant for the World Bank and many other large international organizations, has many publications to her name, and is also a peer reviewer for the Agriculture, Ecosystems, and Environment Journal. And hopefully everyone has received uh, a pamphlet on SRI, so you can be looking at that as she speaks. Today, Dr. Erica Steiger will speak to us via Skype on the system of rice intensification and how it can create a better world. Yes. Welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you for inviting me to speak at the Alliance of uh, uh, Women Scientists and Scholars for a Better for Better World Conference. Um, I'm calling you from uh, Ithaca, New York, and I'm the Director of Programs for the SRI International Network and Resources Center here at Cornell University. In short, we call it SRI RICE. And um, our mission at SRI RICE is to advance and share knowledge about um, the system of rice intensification and to support networking among interested organizations and individuals around the globe. I will present today an overview of the system of rice intensification and how we can support to feed uh, our world population. We know very well the challenges we are facing today in our world. We know that in order uh, to produce enough food to feed the world and assure food security, while at the same time reduce poverty, we need to improve agricultural productivity. We also know that our natural resources are limited and often being overused through extractive agriculture practices. And um, it's of ultimate importance to associate increasing crop productivity with uh, environmental sustainable practices. We also know we are facing climate change and uh, the SRI methodology is able to respond to actually all these challenges. What is SRI? It is a system that has been developed and there's a methodology that allows to increase the productivity of uh, irrigated rice. And uh, it provides principle and guidelines and ideas. It's not a fixed technology and uh, needs to be adapted to the local environment. It was uh, developed in, uh, in the 1980s in Madagascar by a Jesuit priest who has worked over 20 years with uh, rice farmers. And he came up with a combination of practices, um, which I will uh, show you uh, in the next slide. There are six main practices of the SRI method, and I will present them in the next two slides and compare them to the conventional rice cultivation. SRI will be shown in the upper row and the conventional practice in the lower row. In the upper row, we see with SRI, single seedlings are transplanted at a very young age uh, of 8 to 12 days, when the plant has only two leaves. The spacing also is increased. It's 25 by 25 centimeters or wider. In the conventional systems, often very old, much older seedlings are used and uh, more plants are put in one hill, three to five plants, and the spacing is much closer, 10 to 15 centimeters. 
With the SRI practices, the rice paddies are not flooded, which is actually very different from the constantly flooded ir irrigation under the conventional uh, system. Only a very thin layer of water is introduced and it is let dry out and until, until another uh, layer of water is introduced. So very sparse use of water. Another component is the use of organic matter as a base fertilization, whereas in uh, a conventional practice, uh, mostly fertilizer is used, chemical fertilizer is used. Weeding in the SRI system is done through a mechanical weeder, which incorporates the weeds into the soil and also aerates the soil. In the conventional rice system, weeding is either done by hand or through the use of herbicides. So these six practices, we can regroup them into four main principles. The first principle is to favor early, quick and healthy plant establishment, which is usually not a priority in the conventional farming methods. The second principle is to reduce the plant population, um, actually up to 90%. And this is kind of counterintuitive when we think of intensification as when we think of intensification of agriculture, we usually understand that we have to put more plants into an area to produce more yield. Here it is the opposite. We give actually plants more space for optimal development and the yields will uh, increase substantially with it. The third principle is to enrich the soils with organic matter, to keep soils aerated, favor soil microbial development and create a healthy soil that also can hold more nutrients and more water. So we have a better soil productivity, which also can better withstand climate change. And the fourth principle is to reduce the water. We only apply that much water that the plant actually needs and not provide too much water. So what happens now when we apply these principles and practices? We see a change in appearance of the plant. So it is a phenotypical change that appears and you can see on the left side we see SRI plants in the rows and this is on an experimental station in Iraq. On the right side you see the conventional method and it's the same seed, the same time that the plant has been um, started and it is obvious that the SRI plants are much higher, bushier uh, compared to the conventionally grown rice plants. The next slides show you maybe the two most striking differences. There are many other more subtle differences in physiology and morphology, but uh, we can see that the SRI plants increase the number of tillers or stems per plant and then also panicles. And most uh, interestingly also the root system becomes much healthier, can double in volume and weight and it also develops much deeper into the soil. Uh, which you can see in this uh, picture comparison. And uh, the effect now has, it has a big effect. We obtain a longer panicle, some more grains per panicle. The grains are heavier. And often this results in yield increases of, of uh, more than 50%, uh, sometimes 100%. I just wanted to show you quickly on how SRI has spread. As I mentioned before, it has started in Madagascar. And until 1999, SRI method was only practiced in Madagascar. And today we can say that of today, we have a number of countries where we have uh, shown significant yield increases up into 48 countries. I think interesting is to, is to note that these yield increases have been recorded in countries or in all different ecological zones where rice is grown. As shown here in some examples, in the highland of Afghanistan to the desert region in the Sahel, Timbuktu, where I worked personally, to tropical climates at medium and low altitudes, such as Bhutan, or Cuba, or Cambodia, etc. I think it's important to note that the SRI method works with any variety, from traditional to high-yielding variety. Um, it's not depending on the seed. All varieties respond. As we don't really have much time in this presentation, I would like to sum up, summarize the benefits that we have observed across the globe. As I mentioned, we have yield increases often by more than 50 percent, 
water saving of 30 to 50 percent as the rice fields are not flooded anymore. We have a seed reduction that's often more than 90 percent and for resource limited farmers that's often a very big incentive. Also, while we use more organic matter for fertilization, farmers are able to reduce the chemical fertilizers. And often, many farmers in India and Indonesia actually have been able to do um, completely organic SRI with no more chemicals used. Also, because the plants are healthier and uh, stronger, the pests and diseases become less prevalent. And so in many countries, we have seen that the pesticide use has been reduced drastically, especially in Vietnam or Costa Rica, where they use a lot of pesticides. A shorter crop cycle, farmers can harvest earlier, which is of uh, big benefits to farmers very often. And through the deep root systems, we have uh, improved drought tolerance, which was uh, we have seen in India in many uh, places already, where farmers are able to harvest actually some rice when a drought occurs with SRI rares. Other farmers have lost their entire crop. We see improved resistance to strong winds to, as the plants uh, are stronger. And uh, maybe most importantly, especially for poor farmer, we see also economic point of view. SRI uh, allows to increase the income as also the cost for production is decreasing. Maybe most interestingly, and our, uh, something really I'd like to share is that we have seen since 2005, SRI practitioners have started to use the four principles, which I put here again on top, to other crops, especially grass crops like finger millet, wheat, teff, sugarcane, but also with other crops in India, a very wide use on different crops like mustard, pulses, vegetables. And we see the similar results with big yield increases and uh, healthier plants. As this presentation has been very short, I would like to refer you to our website at Cornell University. We maintain the most updated and complete information on SRI and other crops. And uh, you can also uh, sign up on social media platforms. You will be updated regularly on what's new. We update our website on a daily basis. We are connected to most all countries around the world who practice SRI. And I would like to, yeah, please don't hesitate to contact us if you should have questions, if you would like to try it uh, out uh, where you are, and if you would like to discuss some uh, issues. And I think SRI has been really made a big difference for many small and poor farmers around the world. And I uh, we like to see this method spreading, and I like uh, to thank you for your uh, attention. And I think my last slide is from the Malian farmers of Timbuktu, who certainly, <laughs> yeah.